So today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. This is the first time that we've done this type of episode on this channel. Now this is going to be a reaction style video. So recently you may or may not have seen that the BBC came out of a documentary called Insta Traders. And I personally, after watching that, so you're going to kind of watch this with me, we're going to go through it step by step. My blood was boiling. So many parts that they failed to actually talk about. We don't go through the whole thing, but the majority of it. So bear with me as we watch that through together. And I also had the privilege. So one of the guys that they featured on there, which is Sam from KB Train. So big shout out to Sam. When I was watching it, I could already sense that they'd done a really, really poor job and probably lo missed out lots of important details. So I thought I'd jump on a call. So I reached out to Sam, jumped on a call with him, and then you get the direct behind the scenes of what the BBC didn't want to show you. So I'm excited for that. Without further ado, let's just dive straight in. Right guys, so now I'm gonna get into the BBC documentary. You're gonna be watching it with me. I'm gonna to skip to the most important parts. Feel free to watch this in your own time as well. I really wanna cover and hone in on the important aspects so you understand fully what this actually means versus what is being portrayed. So yeah, let's get in. I'm gonna show you the intro first. So watch the intro with me and then I'm gonna to skip to the bits because yeah, you'll, you'll see and I'll explain. Let's go. Right. It looks like the best job on the planet. Being billionaire is not that far away. Forex or foreign exchange is the exchange of different currencies. And it seems like everyone is getting into it. I'd wake up and then just, I'd be at my screen all day. It, it does become an obsession. I've spent the past six months immersed in this world and discovered a whole industry making you believe that you too can become a Forex trader. Show us your skills, pass the FTMO challenge, and become the FTMO trader. When you go Tesco, when you go Asda, I try to go to a till where I see someone, you know, youngish, that looks a bit driven, that looks like they don't really want to be there. Then I say, are you open-minded to making extra income? With a big smile on my face. The odds of winning are stacked against you. In the Forex market itself, I actually lost $5,660. So are any of the people boasting on my social media about becoming traders actually making money through trading? If anything, I was feeding people lies. It's 100% legit. You're welcome. Right, so first up, guys, how do you feel just watching that intro? Curious, let me know in the comments. And I'm, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on this after we get into to after it. But it's already, do you think this is open-minded? Already, if I, if I didn't know anything about trading, I would already be thinking, well, what is this? This doesn't fill me with any confidence. It's already a negative undertone. There's nothing about this. Even the music, just everything. They're, they're very clever what they do. Let's, uh, let's move forward a bit. If you're anything like me, your social media is flooded with people telling you that you can become a Forex trader. I guarantee you this video is going to give you a lot of huge epiphanies. So I thought the people who do this would be in banks, not on Insta. We fly, baby, we fly. Have a great day, love you. I live in a Birmingham suburb. It's not known as an international finance hub. I started out with an open mind. Do you really think he started out with an open mind? He, look, he's a reporter, he's just doing his job. and There's nothing open about this whatsoever, so... And called yeah. my friend Ricky. Yes, Ricky. Dion. Ricky is one of my oldest mates from high school. He's training to be a mental health nurse, so I was a bit surprised that he was also getting into this. Yeah, so I was going to speak to you about trading. Yo, so what happened with trading. that? How did that start? It's Instagram. There's no like limit to how much you can earn on trading. I'm with a proper company, and it's called I Am Academy. What will you become? I am Mastery Academy, or I am, sell products and education in Forex trading. But beyond that, it's not very transparent. It just seems like an organization that wants you to be happy. Right, so for those of you that are traders, you already know about this company. And I think first and foremost, although there's lots of parts that 
what they've done in this documentary, they have brought things to awareness, which I do agree with. However, it's naive to think such a big organization like that, that no one in there is genuine, right? We cannot be naive. Just statistically, there's going to be some good people in there. However, if it's overwhelmingly this type of philosophy about recruiting people, which you'll see in there, of course, I don't agree with that at all. That distracts you from becoming a trader in the first place, but I'm going to skip through these parts. Those of you that already know about IML or IM. Does it really say what you have to do? I sign up. Welcome to the biggest event in history. The man making this wild claim is Christopher Terry, the CEO of I Am Academy. No company has ever... The, the, the reason why I'm smiling, guys, is that this song is actually quite catchy. I need a song like this. Put together an event with 500,000 people. They go big. Massive arena. Three days long. Within the event, it is clear that I Am Academy encourage people to sell their educational products and reward them for doing so. But I Am Academy also say that you can make money through Forex trading, and that's what I'm here to investigate. I reach out to two of the company's top salespeople in the UK. When I watched Wolf of Wall Street, right, that film got me pumped. Let's do this, babe. We've got, we got to really kill it. Notice I couldn't become a millionaire from a nine to five, so exactly. I kind of was trading, and, and that's kind of where I am right now. Katrina and Junior are I Am Academy mentors. Bye. They've taken time out of their busy schedule to talk to me about Forex trading. You guys don't look like typical traders, I'm not going to lie. No. There's it no is. such thing as you know, typical you know what traders anymore. What, what we've done is we've just created a system where one can come in and learn the fundamentals about the market, the fundamentals about different currencies and be able to trade and make profit. I'm going to be nosy here, but what kind of income do you make from Forex trading? You're trading. The way it works is every month is different. You know, trading itself is producing six, seven and eight figure earners inside of the company. But put it this way, we make enough, call it mortgage money. It's a very sexy amount of money. Sexy money? Up to eight figures? Mortgage money? What kind of mortgage? <laughs> Hopefully it's not a one-bed flat mortgage. I'll settle for any of that. But clearly, I'm going to need some help because I still don't understand how to trade. Instagram exactly. is full of people offering to mentor you through I Am Academy. It's confident. Oh, that to hear. It does not lack it. I Am Academy when he was 18. I mean, <laughs> I'm respectful, I am sexy, I am triumphant, Jeez, I'm man. uplifting, I'm vigorous, I am wealthy. I don't know what this X one says. So this guy's actually got some good energy. Seems like a seems like a good guy. He's going for his affirmations. Again, this is the important part about trading that most people don't even talk about, which is the mindset in the first place. But again, my comments on this, you can go and watch this in your own time, but what they bring to awareness with the IM side of things is that a lot of the encouragement is about recruiting. So you recruit your friends. So for those of you that are not traders and you don't know that, it's constant recruiting their friends and then they get paid from that. Now, in theory, you think, well, what's wrong with that? If I've brought someone in, I deserve to get paid for it. You know, you have affiliates and like this, this exists in all different types of industries. But the thing is with foreign exchange, the reason why it's difficult in that sense, because when you're learning how to trade, it's not one of these things where you just like, you're bringing in a product. So you just keep recommending it to everyone. It's very much an individual sport. So when you're distracted by bringing people in, you're not focusing on trading. So then what happens? your mind is then going to be shifted to where if I just bring in another five or 10 people, I'll just start making more money from that. And then the focus is completely shifted. You've become a recruiter versus an actual trader. So there's nothing wrong with actually what they're actually doing in that sense of you've brought people in, you've recommended people, fair enough. However, 99.9% .9 of people that are going to do that are going to be distracted from what actually learning how to trade, which is the hardest thing in the first place. So this is where it kind of gets that bad rap over time. With it sharing the pounds because patients pay website all 19 hours of them 
see just there and then this is the mentality that needs to be squashed or 19 hours of it that's nothing 10,000 hours as I say to master right 10,000 hours what is 19 hours the reason why people don't become a successful trade a trader is because they don't know how to trade and they don't give it enough time I'll go into this point in the later stage as well to me the courses seem patchy but from them I learned that forex trading is essentially betting now, fast forward to the end of the month. Here is how it played out. End of the month, £108.67, roughly a 9% profit. I did pretty well, but don't forget what I paid out in fees for the training and advice from IM. Okay, so my outgoings were £240 sign up fee, plus another month's membership at £202. Let's just quickly take that back, right? And advice from IM. Okay, so my outgoings were £240 sign-up fee, plus another month. So interesting that outgoings, so not investment, there's nothing words of investment, outgoings. This is not outgoings. Like already the problem with that mentality within itself is what is wrong. You've just had a 9% a week and you've done well, right? Regardless, it could be beginner's luck. Your results in the early stages is not even important. So to make the comparison is ridiculous. Month's membership at £202. Assuming I could keep up my 9% monthly profit and continue trading, I would need to have over £2,000 to trade just to cover my IM membership costs. Just to cover my costs. That mentality, you've already lost. This, this mindset is already not built for trading. Like no one who has become successful in trading has that mindset. They don't think like that. And if I actually wanted to make a grand a month, I would have needed to be trading with over 13,000 pounds. Which is a drop in the ocean. 13,000 pounds is child's play. Look, guys, for those of you that are traders, there is it's never been easier to access capital than ever before. If you're someone who comes from humble beginnings, maybe you've not been born into wealth, you might be thinking, I don't even have 5,000, let alone 13K, et cetera. That's no longer an issue for you because all you have to do is get good at the skill, which there'll be a part in here, which they talk about that. And you can have access to money. You can have access to 50K, 100K, 200K and beyond. There is no, like I done it the traditional way. I started in 2008. So it was very traditional with you have to find an investor or friends and family. You have to find people that believe in you once you know what you're doing. However, now you don't even need to worry about how much money you do. It's never been easier in that sense. So this is, makes no sense whatsoever. But here's the kicker. A study of Forex traders like me showed that more than four in five of us lose money, meaning my 9% profit was probably just beginner's luck. I am doesn't monitor their students. So this part right here, this, this is a true statistic. We already know overwhelming amount of traders will fail. But let's just address this part. This is the key thing here and there. Most people don't profit from trading because they don't know how to trade. And it's their expectations of time luck is what the issue. People come in, again, 19 hours, like making it sound dramatic. That's nothing. Like you haven't even got started yet, forgetting about the actual live market experience that you need, how many hours you put in has no correlation towards how successful you'll actually be. There is time and experience that needs to be put in the market. This is like gyms, for example, 90% of the people that go to the gym are not in shape, right? It's only because you see the small percentage that are in there all the time that are shredded. 90% of people that open businesses fail in the first year, yet two months in trading, well, you're not making your money back yet on your education poor me, that like this mindset needs to be squashed. That's why people don't win. Because the reality is, if you put $500 or $1,000, thousand pounds, whatever it is, into a trading account, you call yourself a trader. Like you're not a trader yet. You've just put money into it. And that statistic of, let's say, 90, 95%, whatever it is, if you put that money in there and you start risking, I don't know, 10, 20% of your account, and after five, six, seven trades, you lose your account, which is what that statistic is alluding to. These people are not educated. They don't know what they're doing. They're not traders. They're gamblers, right? This is just like being in the casino. So just from that logic, did the, these, these people didn't even have a chance. So when someone who is, who's a serious trader, a veteran, I've been in this game for over 10 years, when you hear nonsense like that, 
any serious trader just it's is trading just, it's, it's not for the serious traders that is the issue it's because of the young aspiring person like if people don't already get enough stick as it is you might be someone who's 18 20 21 22 whatever it is people fear what they don't understand so your family probably don't support you spouse might not support you because they don't understand it and they watch something like this and they're going to point the finger put more pressure on you and think i told you so like this is not reality of what it's not even close so they don't know whether they counted it. I am. I don't lie about it. Right, so that people in this claims like post. <laughs> I'm telling you, I need a song like this. All right, let's let's skip the the I am stuff uh, for a oh, second. And I know people snuck in earlier. You know. Right there. Do not. You have to change your energy from who you are to a billionaire mindset. And again, they're going to make this part like billionaire mindset. They're going to make this like jokey and laughable. Most people are listening to the radio. Like the same people that are making jokes of this will be the same people listening to the radio, listening to, oh, it's miserable Monday, feel good Friday, low frequency that never go and achieve anything in their life. So don't listen to those people. Chris Terry's advice. Chris Terry's is a product for an MLM to sell. Instant money, instant opportunity. So because still talking about IML at this stage. As you were, you know, we promote the prospects and unpredictable. Right. But that so doesn't stop people part, like quick. me from forking out on courses in the hope of making money. Just like my friend Ricky, who introduced me to IM Academy. How much do you think you've paid to teach yourself Forex? Well, I don't even want to say. I'm not at IM Academy anymore. The reason I joined it was to trade in it, but then I feel like they just focus too much on the networking. I feel like mm -hmm. they just use a trading aspect to get people in. So is that it then? You finish your trading? Nah, I've seen this thing called FTMO. Are you ready for the life-changing opportunity? We are still waiting for you. Show us your skills, pass the FTMO challenge, and become the FTMO trader. It's like so much better. It's a platform for skillful traders compared to IM. And I feel like I would take my trading game to the next level. Firstly, guys, you can't compare the two. Like one is education, one is a prop firm, right? It's if you know what you're doing, then these places, funding, funding firms can facilitate to you. But it's important that we understand that. But what about the study saying four in five people lose money? I need to know more about this company best sense 10 people i'd be detaching myself from like my right so i'm just going to cover this part here right now i've been in this game for a long period of time when i first got into trading i invested pretty much five thousand pounds right two three day course then i had coaching it was the traditional way of doing it it was a very very long time ago and i started off with stocks learned everything and then i got involved in forex at a later stage etc but the important part you have to understand is that that was pretty much all of my savings. When I was made redundant as being an engineer, I had saved up that money. I wasn't born into wealth. I came from humble beginnings, but I put my money where my mouth is. I invested that where people right now, they're worrying about like a hundred pounds or 200 pounds, 300 pounds. How can you expect in one of the biggest financial arenas to just give it two months and you think that you're going to be at the best? Right, it's such a small amount of time. So the reason why what they're going to talk about with things man. like FTMO as the eight, nine out of ten people found, but FTMO is just a funding firm. They just facilitate. They don't know who you are as a trader. So this could be anyone. This could be literally someone who has two months' experience. And if you're a trader, you also understand that you can go on a winning streak. You might actually know not know what you're doing. So what's the appeal? You want a 100K account? You want more than that? Of course you do. You might be miserable in your job. So you could be two months in, have a very basic understanding of trading and fluke a challenge. What's the chances you'll keep it? Pretty much zero. You'll lose it in a couple of months. So it's got nothing to do with that. It's the appeal to get an account so quickly. Most people lose things because they don't know how to trade. They're too early on. So I feel like this statistic, 90, 90, 90, it's been skewed so much because I wouldn't even put these people into a category of trading. It's like I think of the gym. Imagine someone's 30 stone overweight. You take 100 of those people, put them into the gym. They've got the gym, they've got the equipment, they've got all of the resources, but they don't get in shape. Why? Well, they've not changed their eating habits. They've not changed their self-image. They've not changed how they see themselves. If they just continue with their same eating habits, they can go to the gym for five years. They still won't change shape. It's the same with trading. You cannot just learn a strategy, take a challenge and think, 
I'll be successful. But yeah, but the failure rate's high. Guess what? People give up after three months. You can't call these traders. These are gamblers. Don't even put them in the don't even put them in the category. Put people in the category that have actually given it their all. Put people, let's judge the people that have given one year, two years, three years of their time to learn. This mentality of I need to cover my expenses, cover my fees. It's a loser mindset, guys. Absolute loser mindset. You want to go in with the mindset that if the, I don't care whether this takes me one year, two year, three year, five years, I'm going to do this. And I'm going to persist till I succeed. Why? Because on the other side of that, you will make your investment back in pretty much one or two trades. Think about it. You're trading a hundred K account. And let's just say you, you spent 5k, right? 5%, right? You've made your money back. It's very, very simple. So looking at how much you're investing is almost a scarce mindset. You shouldn't be doing it in the first place. And there's so many people that are coming in with that mindset, this side income mentality, you're never going to win. You didn't even have a chance to succeed because you're not wired in the right way, guys. So again, let's just understand and get that part straight. And this is more to the guys that are really serious about wanting to trade and they can be manipulated by something so garbage as this. Numbers. Dawood found out about FTMO through 21-year-old Sam Kavanagh, who he found online. Freeze frame, which is my name. So, without further ado. As well as his slick socials, Sam has a YouTube channel which is all about trading. You can see we are running in drawdown at the minute. We're actually popping up very, very close to our stop loss on this trade. I mean, losses happen, it's part of the job. A lot of these people out here will tell you that they make money every day and the So guys, in this part, I actually I actually reached out to Sam when I saw this because I feel like they bent a lot of the truth there. Sam's a super genuine guy, really, really solid, cares about his students, cares about what he does. I can clearly see that he's passionate about what he does. And I could already sense when I first watched it, I was you could tell like he was a little bit annoyed in some parts, which you're seeing, go watch the whole thing. But you could see there's obviously things that have been left out. And that's normally because it's been provoked. So I just wanted to get the behind the scenes and I've got a little interview. So I've got him on the call so you can see that behind the scenes of what is actually going, uh, what actually happened in the first place. So let me just skip to one part first. Perfect. And they never make mistakes. I'm a human. I make mistakes. Exactly. Sam has Everybody had some does. success on members. You're just joking. Absolutely. We are actually part that's when I have no doubt that sort of single people out. All up in a he has a BMW. I'm going to try FTMO when I'm over there to provide money for myself. To it. Fancy car and nice holidays is exactly one of the reasons I'm doing it, if I'm being honest. What is At least he's honest, right? Like we, we're all getting involved in trading to make money. Do I think that that will last? Probably not, because at a later stage, you'll probably realize that it's not the answer. I mean, who are we to judge what people's goals are? But most people are drawing into that because of that and use that as fuel, use it as your motivation. But at a later stage, don't be surprised as you start to then think a lot bigger. You know, as you start to acquire more capital, you think about investing it, think about growing wealth. There's lots of other areas to it, but it's understandable. Like you want a nice car, you want a nice house. It's naturally going to attract you in. But it's interesting how they just want to focus on that part. Is it that you're trying to achieve with Sam and Glasgow? To double check this, I get hold of a contract. The provider acknowledges that the provider's account is a demo version which does not allow to perform real world trades using forex trading on financial markets. So a demo version which does not allow to perform real world trades using forex trading. So see you see how hypnotic that was. Like even just the music of what they're doing. That they bring some awareness to some important parts in this documentary. However, if you think of it, like my problem is the whole undertone. You watch the whole thing and you feel negative, like the tone, everything that they're using all the way through, right? Prop firms, funding challenges. There's lots of them out there. Do they pay out? Whether they're, What their structure is, I don't know. I've never traded with FTMO. I've always done it in a traditional sense. We have people in our community that trade with different funded firms. They get paid out, right? So they pay out their students that do well. The issue that they're talking about is that most people fail the challenges or they don't keep their account after one or two months well no wonder they could be ha they could have three months experience they're not going to keep their account they don't have the right mindset they don't have the strategy they've not got the resources they've not got a community they don't have everything they need to win they're just excited about a challenge they pay and they lose right where is the extreme ownership taken should these funding firms all 
take extreme ownership on every single person. Everybody has their own free choice to what they want to invest in, what they want to do. You as the individual have to take extreme ownership of your decisions and what you want to do. And if you decide not to get educated, that's your fault, not anybody else's. Are they using, are they training wrong when they about this? They actually bank. And it's actually good for their business because that person is going to go out and advertise for FTMO saying that they won money. But just like a casino, most people will lose. Yeah, so they've got their own model, right? They pay out their students. They know most people will come in with not the right mindset and they may lose. That's their model. They've structured. I don't know the ins and outs of their model, but they've structured that. But again, I bring it back to the same thing. The onus is on the individual, the student. It's your responsibility to go and get educated so you can say, right, I've got the experience now. I know my stuff. Do I want to have access to money? Why wouldn't you, right? And they they give you, it's a perfect business for you to be able to get money and trade money with all different kinds of firms, right? You can scale up your lifestyle. However, you have the responsibility. If you're not ready yet, then why are you doing it? Maybe because you want to rush. Maybe because you're comparing yourself to other people. That is the main issue, not the facilitators. That's just- Leaders with their demo accounts. Last part, guys. Live a company as a side hustle. He's moved over from Ireland to be here. A lot of people are Commitment. giving up a lot of things to apply. All the way from Ireland this with, part. The, with the dream of becoming a trader. Yeah. Realistically, what are his chances of making it as a trader? Personally, um, you know, his personal chances, can't comment to that. I know that the statistic says, you know, between 87 and 95% of people who attempt trading never make it, so say the chances are the exact same. So given that, do you think that the money he's investing in his dream makes any sense? Who am I to say whether I think it makes sense for them or not? That's their choice. Trading can take years, but it's only through actually getting their head down. See, this is the thing. See how that, that narrative is controlled. Do you think, so, so the question is firstly led with, most people will fail, right? These are the statistics. Then it's like, does it then make sense? It's almost trying to uh, answer that question that any rational person would say, well, if most people fail, then it wouldn't make sense. Same thing with uh, fitness, same thing with business. If you was to go by these statistics, don't do anything then. Don't get in shape. Don't go to the gym because most people won't get in shape. Don't open a business because most people lose. Live in fear your whole life and achieve absolutely nothing with that mentality. So I think Sam handled himself very well i'm going to share this interview with you and you can tell he's a little bit rolled up a little bit annoyed because it probably provoked a lot of things like this guy that like we're not actually focusing on look at the commitment to this guy who's actually moving over from ireland that's some proper commitment this is what it takes to win and they've probably left out i believe this guy's actually doing quite well now but they, they leave out these parts but all you can feel is negative through the whole thing and then the last part which is here, I believe. My journey has made me want to steer completely clear of it. The companies I looked at all profit from the money you pay them. So make sure you read the small print and know what you're getting in return. Know what you're getting in return. It's entitled mentality all the way through. Guys, I'm sure you realize before we, I'll, I'll put the section in here about mine and Sam's interview so you understand what happened behind the scenes, but I'm sure you can feel, even just by watching it, it's pretty negative. People have this expectation of if someone said like, look, I've just started a business. I've been doing it for four months, but I'm not making money yet. I think I'm going to give up. Even someone that's never started a business would probably be able to give you logical advice and say, yeah, but it's only been four months. Why you, you need to be a bit more patient than that. So why is it different? People's expectations on trading is so high so early on. No wonder they fail. You want big rewards. It takes sacrifice. It takes investment. It takes putting skin in the game. So. I just I don't normally do these type of videos, but I really want to get my viewpoint across because there could be lots of aspiring people right now that want to change their life. They are serious and they get influenced by this crap. Right, guys. So now I just want to get into the interview that I shared with Sam and he can give you the behind the scenes of what actually happened versus what they portrayed. Right, guys. So I have the pleasure of having actually Sam on board. So I've been going through this and I wanted to give you guys my reaction on what has happened with the Insta trades on BBC. And there's quite a few things that didn't really paint the right picture so i thought i'd have a great opportunity to bring sam on so we could hear from the man who's been interrogated and not really painted <laughs> in a good light when i saw that sam uh I've, of course they brought some awareness to things like iml which i'm sure you're on the same yeah. page with but some things with yourself how, how what's your kind of thoughts on that just give us like the raw thoughts on that i know you've shared a few bits on your insta already 
Yeah, mate, to be honest, I'm not like overly um, fussed about it. Um, you know, I, was, I wasn't really overly concerned about it. After the interview itself, I thought, you know, we kind of expected that there, there might be a kind of a weird twist to it because ultimately, you know, sitting at your desk trading all day doesn't really make good TV. And so we, when they were filming with us, they didn't want to film us trading. They didn't want to film us, you know, talking strategy or, you know, we were in profitable trades, we were in losing trades while they were here. They didn't want to film any of it. You know, even the guy who was the presenter, they told us he was just this young guy who was really interested in trading. And then when he came to the trading floor, you know, he said hi to us, but ultimately he was like just sitting outside on his phone, um, completely ignoring everybody in the room. And the directors had to call him in when they were rolling the cameras. And when they were rolling mm -hmm. the cameras, he was like looking around, like he was so interested. As soon as cameras were off, man, he just switched off. So we knew something was up. Um, so when we heard the documentary was going to be airing, we thought it was going to be, they were going to try and make it 10 times worse than it was. So when it came out, we are like, oh, so all they're really doing is saying he doesn't want to talk about how much each of his guys are making from trading. And also he sells education and one of the hardest to succeed industries in the world. So it's like, I have kind of given them the structure of signal scams, affiliate deals, brokers, bad, you know, professional trading, proprietary trading, education, good. Because at the time it was like education versus signals groups. Now they're starting to blur the lines a little bit, but it was education versus signals groups, right? And they had that clear structure laid out for them. So they went away and got a documentary commissioned mm. and they got allocated a budget for the documentary as well. And they were perfectly, they were actually exchanging emails and phone calls with me about this, Mark, on a mm. weekly basis. Hi, Sam, just so you know, we're ready to go ahead with the documentary. We've been allocated this budget. We want to talk about certain signal scams. We want you to tell us about the education and that kind of thing. So I was actually felt like I was helping them write the documentary. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, right? yeah. And so I was fully on board. I was giving them names, Kez the Guru, you know, Dan, like all these people who I had known about mm -hmm. and how the media was giving them positive exposure and how that was scamming people and BD Swiss and all that stuff. And then they couldn't film because of COVID and there was a massive stop put to the documentary and it was like, mm. we're going to have to put a pause, we're going to have to pump the brakes on this because of COVID. After, see, during the lockdown, first lockdown, that was when the FCA dropped the hammer on all of these signal scams. We were seeing, we were waking up in the morning and Instagram accounts had been taken down, mm -hmm. people were on the FCA register, you know, people were getting brokerage links pulled and all that and all these guys were just disappearing direct forex signals, so FX, whatever it was, were just evaporating overnight. So they were kind of like, we're ready to go for a documentary and half of it's gone now because mm -hmm. none of it exists. And also the Daily Mail, the Telegraph, everybody had already, you know, came and outed, I see. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. direct forex signals and all that. So it was like, they didn't have half of their story now. So what they did have was KB trading, FTMO, education. They actually filmed like Joel Samuels and people like that. Um, so they still had that and my impression was they said we've got this documentary commissioned and we've got an allocated budget we need to just work with what we've got and they came and filmed with us and just thought let's let's just try and find dirt and the reason that something way to talk about confirmation bias right but mm. something that confirmed that belief to me was in an interview with myself and my girlfriend which didn't make the cut when he the director Aaron turned the camera off he said, I said, some of those questions were a bit weird, mate. And he said, Sam, people only say good things about you. He said, we only find good things about you online. If we post something like that, people will think you've paid us for promotion. We need to find something negative to balance out. He said, it's not necessarily to defame your character. It's just mm -hmm. to provide a bit of balance so that you don't look like we're putting you on a pedestal. And I was like, if you're only finding good stuff, mate, why not just show what you're finding? And he exactly. was like, he was like, you can't do that, mate. You can't do that. And we, we were kind of like, yeah, mate, whatever. Um, it's fishy. Mate, it's fishy. So we, we kind of knew at that point. But I think when they looked into FTMO and saw that it was a demo account, they thought, this is what we're going to build this section of the documentary on. And even though I explained to them the copy trade type of mm, model yep, yep. that FTMO described, and see, in all honesty, Mark, I did say to them, see even if FTMO are B booking, which is what, you know, I was explaining them what B booking was. I was like, as long as they pay out the trader, that is what's important because they are contractually bound to pay the trader out mm -hmm. if they follow the rules. 
I was like, so really that's the, the crux of the issue is, do they pay like they say they will? And they said, yeah, no, no, but they can't pay because it's a demo. And I was like, no, you're not listening to me. This is, and they just didn't want to hear it, mate, because it would just pull apart their documentary. They wouldn't have a doc left. So they, as you say, mate, they had, they had that idea. We've got the documentary commission. We've got the budget allocated. We need to make something out of this. And unfortunately, you know, we fell on the firing line for it, but they tried to make it look bad, but ultimately they can't lie. They can only bend the truth and leave out certain things to make it look like, you know, you're lost for words or whatever. But, um, you know, it's be done in that interview. You saw it yourself. You know, I, I looked very like visibly upset, which, mm. you know, in all honesty, mate, I was because for the past 30 minutes, they've been interrogating me about my faith and, you know, about my morals and all that kind of stuff. And, They'd said things like, you know, when you started your YouTube channel, you were targeting impressionable people at the start of lockdown. It's all these weird accusations mm -hmm. to kind of get you riled up so that you're on the defensive. But ultimately, mate, you know, it's it's just, it paints the industry in a bad light because they go after two credible companies like FDMO, like KB, mm -hmm. um, and just try and say that they're like everybody else, you know? 100%. And, and I think you touched on some really good points. You handled yourself really well. So I think yeah, you've done the, the, the best you could in what that situation <laughs> was because they're going to cut yeah. out certain things to yeah. remember they have a narrative. The thing that uh, got me, which was uh, quite funny, right? Because I can already tell like, this guy's not interested in trading. Any yeah, credible course. trader will see through that. But yeah. remember, perception is reality. Mm -hmm. So the perception of people watching that will just be like, oh, that's a bit shady. The young guy from, I think it's from Ireland, the guy that was coming over yeah. to you guys, right? Yeah. Again, just probing questions towards you to make you look disingenuous that you're yeah. just like, uh, you not really care about whether he succeeds or not. Like yeah. just what they was trying to paint then. And the reality is yeah. the stats are the stats. Yes, diff it's difficult to trade. It takes a lot of time and sacrifice and it exposes things out of you or it brings things out of you that you wouldn't even expect. Like no one who gets into trading thinks that I've got to work on my self-image. So what does that yeah. mean? Self-image, yeah. I just want to learn a strategy. Yeah, if you have a lack yeah. of self-worth and low self-esteem, you're never going to succeed. You'll get to a certain level, yeah. and that's about it. And that is the part. It's like, let's not judge the people that come in with the wrong mindset. Let's actually judge the people that are committed. What is the percentage of those people that have proper yeah. commitment? How many of those succeed? Still difficult, don't get me wrong, but how many of those people to succeed? Like this guy talking in the report, he was talking about, listen, I've paid this much amount. I think it was for IML. He's like, I've, yeah. I've spent 250 pounds. I spent another 200 and something pounds on a subscription. And he was just like, but that's that's not considering my fees. And it's almost like, I thought for, for a moment, I was picturing someone like doing a contract of a home of like, Oh, you've paid for the yeah. lawyer fees. I was like, what are you even going on about? That's got nothing to do with yeah. that. It is a drop in the ocean. I spent about £5,000 on my education in 2008. I didn't make uh, any money for about four years, right? Yeah. That's nothing, but it's a drop in the ocean. Once you know the yeah, skill, yeah, you yeah, make yeah. that, you make your whole investment back in like a single trade or just like a, yeah, a of series course. of trades. So this is a drop in yeah. the ocean. If you don't want, you want to be a six, seven figure trader and you're worried about £200, you're in the wrong industry, my friend. Mate, you're totally right. I mean, we've got um, pretty much my right-hand guy at KB studied law. He's actually a law graduate. And I, I don't know how much, £80,000 or something mm -hmm. like that to do a law degree. He's a trader now. So, you know, you could say, well, did that uni scam him? You know, because he paid 80 grand and never became a lawyer. Yeah, okay, he didn't become a lawyer by personal choice. But that's how much education costs. And you may spend 80 grand. How many people that work in Starbucks or cost or whatever have you know a long list of qualifications mm -hmm. you know they're university graduates they spend ten thousand pounds obviously we get free health care here um not free health care free education here in scotland but um you know in a lot of places in the world like england that education is not free and you can spend 80 grand on mm -hmm. a degree and end up in a coffee shop until you can find a job so you know trading is one of those things where okay you can't buy your way to success but a few hundred pounds on a course it's really, it's, as you say, it's a drop in the ocean in comparison. What's, think about the risk reward. What are we taught to do in trading? It's all risk reward. Mm -hmm. 80 grand on a degree for a job that you're going to go in with an entry salary of 28 grand. Even, you know, if you get bonuses and stuff like that, you'll maybe make it back in three years. In trading, you pay three, 400 pounds for a course. And as you say, you can make it back in one trade. Exactly. You've become, you know, some of our members, 200k FTMO accounts, I'm sure. You have plenty of members on those kind of accounts as well that are making 10% on that account in a month. Man. Exactly. You think, 
you know what I mean? They've, they've more than, they've 10x what they spent on their education. They've more than 10x that in single trades. You know, so. Exactly that. And, and people going in with that mindset of focusing on how much money they're spent on fees. Like you've already lost, you've lost. Yeah. And, and he went into that interview, like at the end of the day, he's a reporter, he's doing his job, right? He probably doesn't even care, which is fair enough. He needs to do what he needs to do. But the reality <laughs> is, it's confirmation bias. He's gone in skeptical. You've already lost. It's like, imagine yeah. I've got a view on uh, Donald Trump and I'm going to go yeah. into his like office space, but I'm already skeptical about Donald Trump. The mind works in a way yeah. like he, he won't even realize he's doing it. He will just yeah. search for things to confirm his idea of Donald Trump or whoever it is. So he's going yeah, with trading right. going, oh, not too sure. I'm still a bit skeptical. Well, you're going to remain skeptical, my friend. But yeah. I think you 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 done really well. And like no, no one realizes it, but you're the one behind the camera being like interrogated yeah. it's not an enjoyable experience yeah and i think you represented the trading industry well yeah. yes they brought some parts that, of the bbc yeah. they brought some like awareness to some things about like the whole recruitment and not actually focusing on the skill which i agree Fair. with i don't think yeah. that's a good part of the industry yeah. but absolutely right. people like yourself that actually are clearly passionate about helping others and look your success doesn't take from me my success doesn't take for you and i think in this industry where it's very very dog eat dog it's more yeah. important that we don't coward away and we actually help and support each other, especially stuff like that. So big props. I'm yeah. sure you got some messages of abuse as well. Yeah, mate, to That'd be happen. fair, I've not had any from traders as such. It's mostly like, you know, random people like, you know, Joanne, who's, you know, 48 and sitting at mm. home with a glass of wine, you know, on a Tuesday night, just like going in on you, like you're a scammer, you know, I wish your business would just go under and all that. And you're like, Easy Tiger, you know, you've seen like 30 seconds of a 40 minute interview, you're like exactly. all of a sudden have this personal vendetta against me. But to be, I don't, I don't think any successful trader will tear into anybody about anything no. because they're on a different level. They are literally on a different level and any kind of negativity or trying to look at anything negative interfere, it knocks you off balance. You can't come in and consistently perform if you're harboring all this negativity and you know, I think that's why you don't tend to get successful people, you know, chatting, you know, to other people because no, it's just, they're, they're on a different level mentally and emotionally and they don't ever dip. They don't dip for anything, not for gossip, not for drama, nothing. They just, they just stay, stay on the level that they're on and, you know, like you say. Yes, they stay focused on the vision. Well, it's exactly what you're doing. So Sam, continue to do that. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to reach out to you when I saw that. And yeah, I think you handled it really, really well. And you'd done the trading industry proud. Yeah, thanks a lot, mate. I appreciate it. No, you're welcome. Well, Sam, thanks for taking the time to come on. Enjoy uh, have a, enjoy the rest of your day. Happy trading. And I'll catch you soon. Yeah, mate, no problem. See you, dude. Um, okay, we're rolling. So, what do you think? Garbage. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be honest, absolute garbage. Uh, I think that, like I said in the um, in the episode, I think Sam handled himself very, very well. I thought they brought some really decent awareness towards the IML stuff. Like I said, like, I'm sure in anything there's going to be genuine people. Like you can't, we're naive to think that whole organisation is not one genuine person. Of course there is, but it gets a bad. There's no smoke without fire. It gets a bad rap for a reason, because people are doing unethical, unethical things and they're promoting the wrong things, pushing people to just bring more people in versus focusing on the skill itself. Like trading is already difficult enough as it is. Even from that, if I was someone who I was thinking about trading Forex and I watched that, I'd be put off straight away. Yeah. And that's so, what's the word for it? It's like, it's so reckless and careless yeah. because that can ruin someone's pathway that could be genuinely someone who wants to get involved. Where now, yeah. because they've just got such a, a really grey idea of what for there was nothing about mindset, nothing about long term focus, nothing about processes, nothing about what actually needs to happen to succeed. Like if you don't have the right mindset, like just let's get that straight. If you don't have the right mindset, first and foremost, you have the best let's say there is a best strategy in the world. You have the best strategy in the world, but if you don't have the right mindset, it's useless. It's literally useless. It's like having the best fitness plan on the planet but yet you've not changed your eating habits, you've not changed your mindset, you haven't got this mentality and you've got a poor self-image. It doesn't matter what you've got. You can have the best tools, facilities, resources on the planet if you don't have your mindset right. Where was the mindset talk in there? Hardly any, like they touched on the tiniest, tiniest bits of it, but these people that come in, give it three months and then give up and blow their accounts. Like to me, they're not even traders. Like don't even put them in the statistic. I'm talking about the people that come in that are committed and want to learn and give it time and invest in themselves, what's that statistic? 
That doesn't mean in three, six months that you'll be successful. It takes a lot longer. So they, they did like, I'm not even trying to play the neutral part, but they, they, do, they did bring some areas to light to it because of course there's always gonna be cowboys in every industry. But the reality of the situation is, it was almost like we're going in with an open mind, but the narrative was all negative from like day one. And that's the part that I thought, you know what? I wanna make a video to this because it's very misleading to people that actually wanna do it when mindset is the biggest part. Where was this talk about that? Why? There's no talk about it because I don't understand it, right? So you're almost influencing someone from someone who's actually not interested in it. Like that was probably put together very, very quickly with like minimal research on a tight budget just to get it out to make it entertaining for people. You know, so, and I know, and the reason why I wanna, why I wanted to do this video, because I'm sure already many of you get stick from your mums and dads, that you wanna do this, they don't see it as a real job, they don't see it as a real career, and they're sitting there pointing the finger going, told you so. Based off of that, who don't know what they're talking about, literally have not a clue. To be honest, if you want to get involved in learning how to trade, you have to get in for the right reasons and it's not for those reasons. It's not because you wanna focus, oh, I've invested this much, I've not made my money back yet. Like you're gonna lose. You've gotta go in with the mindset that you might not make money for a year. You might not make money for two years, but it doesn't matter. But the lifelong skill that you will make, you it is a drop in the ocean for what you will make in the future. That is what you should be focused on. Not this, oh, I've, made, I've not made money in three months or I'm not making back my education fees. Like, that's, that mindset is a loser mindset. That's not gonna help you win in anything. Like no business person starts to invest in a business and then looks at, oh, but look at my expenses. Look, I put all this money up front. Like they understand they might not make money for a year, but they've got a bigger long-term vision. It's no different to trading guys. So hopefully this has given you a bit of a different perspective. And there was some things that where the truth was kind of bended. I'm sure they left out loads of parts, especially in Sam's part. So hopefully you enjoyed that part, his take on it. And again, guys, hope you enjoyed this episode. Something a little bit different and relevant. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you actually thought of that. As a trader that's put all of their hours, all of their time into that, how did you feel watching that for someone who actually takes this serious? I'd be really curious to know. Guys, catch you in the next episode.